Hello everyone and welcome to re-entry. Uh, in this video we will go through the final uh, preparations of uh, uh, an Atlas launch of Project Mercury. So the first thing that we uh, want to do is uh, to go into the capsule itself and I'm going to hit C to open up the function bubbles and then I'm going to hold the countdown. This is just to give me some extra time as we walk through some of the procedures and some of the concepts of re-entry. So you can toggle these functional buttons using the C button on the keyboard and obviously you can rebind this to anything you want uh, on the setting page. So the first thing that I will do is to uh, hit M to open up the mission pad. And the mission pad comes with uh, a couple of tabs. Uh, the a mission plan uh, in general, a briefing page, a map, a checklists, transcript of uh, all communication with mission control, and a section to uh, type uh, down your own notes as you go through uh, a mission. So the tab that I'm interested in now is to go into the checklists tab, and then you will find in the pre-flight section uh, something called the final checks. So most flights will start uh, before launch uh, at the final checks uh, T minus five minutes, meaning five minutes before launch, this checklist should be executed. And this is the only steps that you will require to do uh, during a traditional uh, Mercury uh, mission. However, there are some uh, missions that will require you to go through all of these uh, initial um, procedures and uh, I'll make a dedicated video where I go through all of uh, these steps here in detail. But for now we are going to go into the final checks uh, checklist first and then after uh, ignition we will go into the ascent checklist and then continue down uh, with Biko and Seiko. And uh, on a separate video I'll do the same on Redstone just to kind of show you the differences between those two um, Ascents. As you can remember uh, from the previous video, you have uh, seen that the Redstone is the smaller launch vehicle uh, of Project Mercury, and this one is not capable of bringing the, uh, the spacecraft into orbit, while Atlas uh, has that capability, meaning that the ascent will be uh, longer and that the rocket will be bigger. So in this mission, we are going to do an Atlas ascent. So. First of all, let's go into the final checks um, section of the checklist. And uh, once open, you can see that it's uh, not very long. And there's a couple of switches that we'll need to, to verify. So I'm going to go through uh, the run feature pretty soon. But first of all, um, let's just read through. So the first thing that we'll need to do is to set the launch control switch to ready. That's the launch control switch here. And if you set this one to ready, that means that you as the astronaut is uh, getting ready and uh, uh, for ignition. So the first step is to ask it to switch, set this to ready. The uh, next thing here is that we want to make sure that all of these are set to their marks. So the suit temperature is on the mark, uh, cabin temperature is on the mark, and the inverter temperature is also on the mark. This controls the desired temperatures of the suit, cabin, and inverters, and we'll try to maintain this through the environmental control system. Uh, next, we will need to make sure that the transmit is set to the UHF position. This is the ultra high frequency, um, you can call it a radio system, radio communication system that allows us to talk with Earth. So, as mentioned, uh, as mentioned before, we have HF, which is the uh, high frequency and then you have ultra high frequency which are the two different radio main radio modes and in ultra high frequency you can also be switched between low and high power uh, high power uh, will go uh, longer in its range uh, so ensure that this is such UHF which is this and then we will go in and perform a radio check on UHF and then I'll click radio check and then you can see that player one we read you 505 on UHF and if I now uh, just for fun switch this one to HF, HF and then I do a radio check 
you can see that we uh, review 505 on HF. So it's a good indication that the radios are working. Um, so anyways, we've now done the radio check on UHF. The next thing that we want to do is to uh, remove the cover of the time zero button. So I'm going to right click uh, uh, to put the cover back in and left click to remove the cover. So right click puts it back in and left click uh, puts it uh, away. And then uh, if you now left click this one again, it will actually trigger that function. And this is an irre irreversible uh, step. So do not press this button. Just make sure that the cover itself is removed, but don't trigger the function. Uh, the uh, key uh, uh, functionality of the time zero button is to start the timer uh, once you uh, are uh, uh, once you have a lift off from the pad. So if the timer doesn't start, it means that the sequential system sh won't work correctly. So if you detect that this timer does not start on ignition and uh, or two seconds after ignition then you need to manually press this button or else you will have a lot of trouble on the ascent so once you have ignition the first thing to look for is uh, to see if the timer starts and then we'll go into the altitude and some of the other things to, uh, later so uh, cover is now uh, removed and again warning do not press the time zero button and then we have the DC uh, volts knob. You can set that to basically anything you want. This is the main bus, but we would like to monitor the one position uh, of uh, this one for the ascent, this battery one. And then um, the squib switch should be set to arm. This means that we are arming the squibs, uh, which controls kind of the internal explosions required to trigger uh, important functions during ascent, such as for example, staging and separation uh, and so on. Uh, and then um, we also want to set the auto uh, retro jettison switch to arm. This switch controls if the sequencer is allowed to automatically jettison the retro engines on the bottom of the spacecraft. These engines are the ones that you uh, need to get back to Earth uh, if you're in an orbital mission, such as you know what you do in in an Atlas ascent, you get into orbit. And the only way to return is to fire the retro engines. And before entry, you wish you, uh, to jettison them. The reason why you want to uh, enable the auto retro jettison during ascent is in case of aborts. Uh, once you have an abort, the uh, capsule uh, will, depending on what type of abort, it will kind of continue its ascent and uh, try to separate itself from the launch vehicle and then you have this um, launch escape towel that will pull the capsule away from the ascending launch vehicle uh, and then uh, once you have uh, separated from the launch vehicle and uh, moved away from it on a safe distance the capsule will turn around and uh, target its heat shield in the direction of flight uh, which means that you should also remove the retro engines uh, before entry. Obviously, this depends a little bit on what type of abort state you're in, but always keep this on arm during ascent because you never know what uh, might happen. And then uh, finally, at uh, T minus 30 seconds, we uh, can, for example, go ahead and start the ascent checklist. Uh, for now, I am going to uh, hit run here. And this will uh, trigger the um, the uh, checklist guidance system uh, and go through all of these steps here. So you can see that now it automatically went through a couple of steps. If I can clear it all and then run it again, you can see that it automatically goes through everything here because everything in its, uh, is in its correct position. And then it's flashing and uh, that is a request that you need to perform a manual step. And this is the radio test. And this is something that we've done. And then uh, the next manual step is to verify that this uh, cover is removed. And then the rest is also uh, configured correctly. So there's two different ways of executing checklists. You can do it manually like we did initially in this video, or you can go through uh, using the run feature. And just to show the concept, if I set, for example, this switch to off, this is now in the wrong position compared to this checklist. If I press run, then it will all ask us to put this one in the correct position. 
and then go through the checklist again. Anyways, we are now ready uh, for launch. And uh, since I uh, asked uh, Ground to hold the countdown, I will go ahead and hit resume countdown. And then uh, we have two minutes left to ascent, uh, which means that I'm going to go through the um, time scaling feature. So now I'm going to use the time scale button. That's uh, the uh, alphanumerical keys one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero on the keyboard. So if I hit two, for example, you can see I have double speed. Three will have five times, uh, four will have 10x, and so, and so on. And I'm going to time scale. And you see that it will automatically stop around uh, at around t minus 20 seconds. Nine, we'll also eight, open up the ascent seven, checklist. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right, countdown. Roger, the clock is operating. We're underway. As we are loud and clear. Zero. Roger, we're programming and roll OK. First thing that you'll see is a along about here. This will uh, cancel out the deltas uh, from the launch pad. And then, uh, once roll program is complete, uh, you can see that the roll is uh, on its zero position, meaning that the roll program um, uh, has done its job correctly. Then, the pitch program starts, which will slowly bring the pitch needle down towards zero. Right after uh, liftoff, uh, it is important to verify that this timer, uh, which is now at 43-44 seconds, uh, did start. If it didn't start, you need to hit time zero. The uh, second important thing uh, initially is to verify that uh, altitude is climbing. And you can see that it starts from zero and then goes up all the way to 100,000 feet. So this is uh, good to monitor during the initial phase uh, of ascent. Uh, and then secondly, uh, we will need to verify that the cabin pressure here uh, is stable at uh, around 5.5. Uh, and this one will start at 14 uh, on uh, when we're at the pad, but will then slowly bleed out as it's been doing right now and then stabilize at 5.5. If this is able to stabilize at 5.5, this means that the environmental control system is able to do, do its job on maintaining the uh, desired cabin pressure. Uh, it's always good to go through the electrical systems, so quickly cycle through, you should see load on all the batteries, and then uh, go through the standby to see that you have uh, voltage and the same with the isolated battery, which is used to control all of those uh, squib uh, triggers here. So the squib requires those isolated batteries in its normal configuration. So always go through these as Bingo. you can Alright, so now we have uh, had staging, and uh, this means that the lower engines has been separated, and uh, only one engine is now currently um, thrusting and will bring us into orbit. The uh, tower was just jettisoned, meaning that if we now take a look out the window, you can see that the tower is gone and that the jettison tower light is green. This means that the tower has now separated as it's no longer needed um, uh, during flight. Uh, this tower jettison, as uh, mentioned initially, is only needed during the initial uh, abort uh, on the ascent. So if there's an abort during the start of ascent, then the uh, tower will pull us away from the failing launch vehicle. And uh, once this booster has been separated, then it uh, requires us to go to the uh, booster engine cutoff checklist, uh, which is the booster stage basically that we just uh, removed. So let's go to so this is on the Atla uh, Ascent checklist, Atlas, start Ascent Beacon, and then we'll skip Redstone and then hit Beacon, and there you can see that, okay, uh, the jet uh, tower button should be amber, and then about 20 seconds after Beacon it should be green, and then uh, we should go ahead and set some of these fuses to uh, and switches to off. So let's go through the run. Uh, 
face of this. So first of all, uh, these are verified, and then we'll set the auto retro jettison to off, and uh, we'll uh, also set the uh, retro jettison uh, fuse to off, and then uh, same with the emergency retro jettison. The reason for this is uh, for redundancy and to ensure that there is no way for the spacecraft to separate the retro engines. The only time we want to separate the retro engines is either through an abort or after the uh, retrograde engine has been fired during uh, retrograde. If you for some reason lose those engines or uh, accidentally uh, jettison the retro engines during uh, uh, orbital flight, then you have no way of returning back to Earth. So this is why it's very important to to configure these uh, fuses and switches uh, as is. And then uh, Seco is the next one, and if I now open the checklist um, and go to Seco, then at sustainer engine cutoff, then we will get the cap set uh, going to amber, and then green once complete. Rico! Lots of grades fired, okay! Alright, and capsule separation. Uh, after capsule separation, the uh, uh, spacecraft will start its turnaround maneuver and uh, automatically uh, get into its retrograde attitude. And at this position, you can see that the spacecraft is now uh, orienting itself around 180 degrees to phase in the retrograde uh, direction so the engines are ready to fire in case of uh, an immediate abort and you need to return to to earth then you you don't need to do anything uh, in terms of attitude maneuvering and so on you can see, uh, still see the um, launch vehicle uh, that took us into orbit uh, in a similar orbit than we are okay i can now set the time zero switch back in um, and I think that that's it for the majority of the ascent. Once you are in orbit, um, as we are right now, this is called the orbital configuration. You would like to quickly go through some of these settings. This is uh, basically the insertion checklist. So if I hit run on this one, you can see that uh, we should monitoring the main bus, which we are doing. The landing badge switch can be set to off. And then uh, the emergency retro sequencer can be set to off. Uh, same with the drug. And then uh, it asks us to check all instruments. And uh, this is uh, obviously quite uh, uh, open, but it means uh, monitor that everything is okay. Uh, G load um, was increasing during the entire ascent, and this is obviously also good to monitor during ascent. And uh, once the uh, uh, engines uh, of the boosters are cut off, that's two engines, it will reduce slightly and but then keep uh, climbing. And on Seco, it will go back all the way to zero, which means that we're at in free, uh, we're in orbit basically. Then uh, you have the control fuels, uh, which is showing 100% on auto and 100% on manual. This is the fuel required to uh, maintain attitude. It is very important to not deplete this fuel. So you can hear in the background that uh, the spacecraft is now currently using fuel to uh, maintain its retrograde orientation. Uh, if you want to avoid that, you can switch uh, either, for example, the, AS, uh, uh, the flight modes into a different uh, attitude here uh, to, for example, aux on. Uh, this will basically just try to cancel larger rates on the spacecraft if anything uh, happens. But other than that, it will, it will not automatically try to maintain that retrograde uh, attitude. But this is obviously something that we'll cover in a later lesson. Um, the other things to uh, check during orbit is to ensure cabin pressure is in its green section, ensure that cabin uh, temperature is uh, within normal uh, degrees. Uh, if not, you can use the suit temperature and cabin temperature controllers to, to control this. And you can see the 
suit environment is also uh, visible here on both pressure inside the suit and uh, the temperature. And then uh, you have uh, uh, the oxygen levels in the two tanks, which is also very good to go through uh, frequently. Ensure that you have oxygen less. And uh, the way that this works is that oxygen will be used from the primary tank first. And once this one regi is reduced around 10%, it will automatically start consuming oxygen from the sec secondary tank. So there's two oxygen tanks. And lastly, uh, cycle through the electrical systems, ensure that the batteries, uh, the three main batteries are uh, working. They have uh, a good voltage above uh, uh, 24 to 28 ish and then depending on load and then standby batteries and isolate batteries are also within their nominal range and then you can quickly check the ac systems if you need to but yeah that's basically uh, what you need to check and in some cases uh, you uh, can write down the values at certain intervals so you can kind of give uh, have a good history of you know how quickly your oxygen is being consumed uh, the temperatures on board uh, so you can detect if anything is out of the ordinary and uh, outside the data ranges that you are used to so if you do that frequently you will get more and more, more knowledge about what it should be so now we are in orbit and the capsule is basically just drifting uh, around and then at some occasions you can switch it back to norm and uh, it will return the capsule into its desired attitude uh, during orbit. But this is obviously uh, mission dependent on how important it is to stay within these limits. But now you can see that we are now back into orbital attitude. With that, uh, I want to say thank you for watching. Uh, in the next session, I will create a similar but uh, shorter video where I just highlight the main differences between an atlas and uh, a redstone ascent. So, thank you for watching.